from the point of view of the sympathetic nervous system, positivity has no purpose for survival. And so therefore it doesn't merit our attention in the same way that negativity or threat um, can, can get our full attention. And I, I think a lot of people want to be more positive, right? We, we read all these positivity quotes on social media and, and we say, oh, that's great. You know, this is my new thing and all of that. Why? Well, I'm going to say, why is it so hard to do this? But how, how can we sort of unlock that, that more positive tendency within each of us in a real world practical way? And give us, a, give, give me like a real world sort of expectation. How long does it take? to start to become more positive? Well, first of all, I think what you've said is correct. And one of the problems, of course, and I don't mean to keep harping back to Western capitalist society, but the goal of, <laughs> unfortunately, the society we live in is to have infinite growth on a finite planet, which is fundamentally impossible. And so ever increasing consumption, while it has continued to occur, is ultimately finite. And what I mean by that is that always chasing something, always uh, being under threat that if you don't achieve something, something bad's going to happen, of course, is not helpful whatsoever. Um, getting back to your query, one of the challenges for a lot of people is that they carry the baggage for good or bad of their childhoods with them throughout their lives. And there are certain very specific developmental points in our lives where we learn how to connect with other people, how to be nurtured, how to love, how to care. And this is called attachment theory or bonding theory. And if those areas are associated with negative aspects, many children have these types of behaviors embedded into their subconscious. And as a result, they don't appreciate that every action they take as an adult, every relationship they engage in, every interaction actually is tainted by negative baggage. And as we were just talking about negativity, you don't see any news programs that are all about positivity because positivity is not a threat to people. Negativity, though, makes one turn by our evolutionary constructs. So unfortunately, this is sort of a morphing of how we were designed just because of the modern world. In terms of a positive practice, and also let me just preface this by saying, yes, there is something called toxic positivity where, you know, you finally sit there and say, look, I've had enough of this bullshit. Yes, I appreciate all these great things, but they're not helping me one iota at this moment in my life. And I certainly get that as well. But what does happen when you're able to shift into the parasympathetic nervous system or this rest and digest system, in many ways, what happens is you see the world in a different way. You understand that everyone is suffering. You understand that how somebody appears at this moment may not have any relationship to what's actually going on. You appreciate that everybody is, hopefully, almost everybody, is doing the best they can at that moment in time. And I think that makes you much more thoughtful, more kind, and more connected to people. And what we have a genetic imperative to do is to connect, to care for others. This, of course, started with our nuclear family when our offspring, like unlike other species, don't run off into the jungle or the forest. They have to be cared for for a decade, decade and a half, two decades. And that requires one to be present and offer time and resources. And unless there's some very deep power that makes you do that, and this is why I say a genetic imperative, it's embedded in you, but you won't and your species will not survive. So when our children or offspring are suffering and are hungry or in need, when we act towards caring for them, then this results in the release of different types of neurotransmitters. One I'm sure you're familiar with, oxytocin. And this is called the love bonding affiliation caring hormone. 
And when that is released, our reward and pleasure centers are activated. We shift into this parasympathetic nervous system. Our physiology works at its best. Our brain networks function at their best. And at that moment, we are the best people we can be. And, and we feel good. That's where we need to live. But in modern society, with the needs that are forced upon us to survive, this distorts the system and chronically activates, for many people, their sympathetic nervous system. If you like that video, you're going to love the next one. Click this thumbnail right here, and I'll see you over there.